Uh, we're going to move over to uh, Doug Mast now, who is with Sylvia, and we'll get, that's a second um, sculpture demonstration of the afternoon. Hello, uh, Dr. Mast. Hello. Sylvia has requested uh, Sculptra. Uh, she likes the, the concept that it's her own collagen that's forming. She's aware she's going to need a number of uh, treatments. And I marked on her one side just for uh, uh, sort of to move along quickly. Can you sit up for us? Okay. So she has um, this temporal hollowing I had talked about. And we're going to be able to actually put a little Sculptra subgaily here and lift her eye up, which actually works very well. She has nasal labial folds that could be treated with any product. Um, she's not the absolute best sculptor candidate for nasolabial fold uh, example, but since we're treating everywhere, we can go ahead and treat her nasolabial fold as well as help with some of her canine fossa recession. And then we're going to treat along her pregial sulcus and add uh, volume to her chin. You can lay back then. Now, the sculpture's been mixed uh, the night before, uh, at least. One thing, I don't know if you can see the bottom of this. Can you see the bottom of the sculpture? We cannot. How's that? Okay. Now we can. <laughs> now you can. See how there's a, it almost looks like uh, triamcin alone, how it wants to fall out. It is a particulate suspension. So what you want to do is swirl. You don't want to shake. You want to swirl it so that it goes into suspension. And you want to keep swirling until basically there's no product, you know, left in the bottom of, of it. So. As Phil was saying earlier, you know, you don't want to get that foam. That foam is what clogs your needle. That's the carboxymethylcellulose, makes it harder to inject. And so now it's all in suspension. And so your, what should come out should be a nice particulate suspension. And come around the side. We're going to treat the marked area here. So in the temples, you want to be below this, at least the superficial temporal fossa. You can actually go in all the way below the deep fascia, but I think as long as you're below superficial fascia. So patients will oftentimes describe that they hear the crunching. Okay. Is that, is that a 25 gauge? That one is a, and a 25 gauge one and a half. You can do a 26. It happens to be what we have. And I'm actually fanning here, again, staying below the fascia at all times. This is one one cc in. And I realize that this is mostly water, but you do get the concept of the, the difference between the two sides. Now I'm going to draw more up. So what he's going to try to do is to raise that eyebrow. One of the things that I love to do is I also use sculpture there to give you a long-term effect on the eyebrow, and I give a little Botox there as well. Right. Now since there's lidocaine in this, the mixture that I use, 8 cc, so it's uh, 6 cc of sterile water, and then I add 2 cc of lidocaine uh, right before. Okay? So this area, since it had some lidocaine in it, is already uh, a bit anesthetized. So we're going to go in. Now, in this area, what I do in the lateral uh, brow is actually lift up the skin. And I want to be under, I want to be in that potential space, that loose alveolar tissue, and it should be able to just push forward without much effort at all. And then what we can do is just massage that out. And it should easily just massage out if you're in the right plane. And that plane is subgaleal. Uh, again, that loose alveolar tissue. And I don't know if you can see the difference between the two and how that's elevated that eye. Okay. Now, in terms of her nasolabial fold, with a deep filler, such as uh, calcium hydroxyl apatite or Sculptra, you actually want to lift out and build support under your nasolabial fold. So turn a little bit for me. So we're going to mark out how far our needle will go. Medial to the fold. How you doing? OK. Now, if I had an assistant, we would already have the uh, material drawn up. So You're on your own, buddy. I know. It's tough. It's all right. <laughs> it does allow the fact that uh, the material will be what I call fresh, meaning that it hasn't fallen out of uh, a suspension. If you have, because you're just starting out doing sculpture and you take a while and you 
pull back, you'll find that the needle may clog, and that's just put a new needle on. That's because you have partial product through the needle. One other hint for needle clogging is to keep your uh, thumb off the plunger, because when you push on the plunger, you're going to put particles towards the tip of the needle, and that will uh, almost universally want to make it clog. Okay? Now we're going to do a deep injection here in the canine fossa, actually down to the bone, 0.2. I don't worry about, because I can aspirate, I, this is mostly water uh, with particles in it, so I can aspirate easily, so I'm not worried about the angular artery. And then what I will do is come across the fold, deep and cross, and lift it out. Okay, doing okay? All right, now we're gonna move to her lower face. Are there any questions? Clear as mud. The injection near the end of the nose, how is that done? At, yeah, right there. Uh, uh, the canine fossa, so you go in, in, down to bone, aspirate, and inject uh, about 0.2 to 0.3 cc's. Got that? Okay, now we're going to move down to her pregial sulcus. And I actually do a deep injection all the way down. You can almost feel the bony resorption uh, that we were talking about earlier. And so I, I've actually also did a little bit of skin local here, if you see some blanching, just for patient comfort. So I go in, I down the bone, and then I pull back and go more superficial. So I can tell you, he probably has an instance of nodules that is close to zero because of the combined dilution and how deep he injects them. Of course, you're massaging. It's just and I like to massage also. One thing we didn't talk about was the need to massage. And I think there was one abstract that was published that did show that the importance of massage with PLA. And uh, it's something that doesn't cost anything to do, so I do recommend that my patients do it. How much they do varies. My mnemonic is couple, 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 couple times a day for a couple minutes for a couple weeks. Ron Moy likes five minutes, five times a day. I don't think that it matters. I think it's good to do. Now we're going to come. It's probably a lot more important to do early on than later. Exactly. You want to get that stuff just moving all over the place there. Exactly. All right. And so each time I swirl the vial to draw up the new syringe so that the suspension is nice and uniform. Again, the uniform placement of PLA, I think, is part of uh, having good result. Okay. I'm going to turn a little bit here. From the same, uh, chin up a little bit for me, the same uh, local anesthetic injection, I'm going to go medial in the marionette lines. I'm actually now ideally superficial above the muscle. A little bit goes a long way in this area because of the active muscle area. So notice when he says superficially, he does not mean that he's superficially. I do not dermis. mean in dermis. <laughs> I mean more, super, relative, more superficial than my other injections. Uh, and superficial sub-Q, right below the dermal sub-Q plane. Okay. Now, one other thing we can do for Sylvia is actually augment her chin a little bit. Again, this will work very well with radius or PLA. When I'm using the same product, I like to do as many areas as I can for the patient. I think they get a nice uh, added economic benefit. And I'm very deep here, as you can see. Okay. And that's the, on the side, you want to sit up and uh, can you pull back and see the, okay. Yeah, you can see a difference right in the right side versus the left. Okay. And, you know, again, I don't think that this is a perfect for her nasal labial fold, but since I'm doing this entire treatment, I'm going to get her where she's much happier with her temple, pre sulcus, and then I might come back, depending on how she does, and use a dermal filler for her nasolabial fold. Yeah, that's a really nice demonstration. Okay. So <clears throat> we're going to uh, now do the left side.